Hey gang, Rodin here. Welcome on back to the Retrocade and welcome to another edition of Sucker Punch Sunday. And for this week, we're going to go back to 1987 and we're going to play the game version, one of the first versions of one of my favorite anime of all time, which as you can see on the screen is Fist of the North Star. Now, if you are not familiar with this particular anime, you may also know it by its original Japanese name, which is called Hokuto no Ken. Uh, it is one of the most well-known anime made in the last 40 years. Uh, I didn't discover it until the late 80s and early 90s, and actually with this game, it's a case of where the, the cover art for the box that this game came in was what got me interested enough to go find the anime, and then I've been a fan of the anime ever since. So what we're going to do over the course of the next half an hour or so is we're just going to try and get through this game. Now, I'm going to pause this really quick just to give you a quick overview of how the controls work. So being a Nintendo game, the controls are actually really simple. You have a basic attack function of uh, A is your punch, B is your kick. And Kenshiro who is the hero in this story, is known as the Fist of the North Star. He is the master of a particular martial arts style, which is called Hokuto Shinken, God Fist of the North Star. And what he's able to do is anytime he makes contact with you, for lack of a better term, you explode. Uh, so he is able to literally tear through any enemy that he comes into contact with. Now, the original anime for uh, this series came out in the early 1980s uh, in manga. It was started publishing from 1983 to 1998 uh, in Weekly Shonen Jump, and it was created by Tetsuo Ohara, who did the art, and then the writer, his name is Boronsen, uh, but although his actual name is Yoshiyuki Akamura. So the general crux of this story is the world has literally fallen apart. Uh, it has been decimated in nuclear war. Kenshiro is one of the remaining survivors of that nuclear holocaust. And because the world has gone to pot, it is overrun by gangs and thugs and superhuman and supernatural creatures. And as the world is looking for somebody to save it from all of that, that was where Kenshiro comes in. Now, it pulls a lot of its inspiration from George Miller's Mad Max franchise. If you look at the way that Kenshiro is dressed, he wears a, a vest very much like what, uh, or in a leather jacket, like what Matt, uh, Mel Gibson did in Mad Max. But as you see, I made that guy explode, so that sub-boss is gone. Now, the original series of Hokuto uh, no Ken ran for about 105 episodes. And it was quite epic in scale. For an anime, it is definitely one of the larger ones in terms of size of that era. Now, they could get away in a game like this when you see these guys bulging... It is because I'm making them explode. Now these stars I'm picking up, every for every one I pick up, you will see up in the upper left-hand corner, the power gauge. Which allows me to be able to attack a little bit more and do more damage. Oh, but actually, he got me as much as... I got him, so we both died at the same time. Now, when the original series was uh, wrapped, uh, its anime run in around 1986, they did a secondary series based on some ancillary stories that Hara and Bronson put together that really didn't have any overall bearing on the main storyline, and they're really honestly not as good, but one of the things they wanted to be able to do to help market that was they came out with this game. Now, 
Now, being a 2D side-scrolling game, the idea of having a whole lot of high graphic quality isn't going to be that great. And the company that came up with this was called Taxon. Uh, it was done in coordination with Toei Animation. And Taxon started in 1981. And they were around until 1991 when they went out of business. And they made it... Primarily the video games they made were all for uh, the NES. And along with this, they made a game called Star Soldier. They made a version of an another anime. Whoop. So I'm trying to jump over here. Come on. Oh. There we go. You have to hit up to jump. It's not an actual attack button. It helps you get up there. There we go. But along with Fist, their really most notable game that Taxon created while they were still in business was they made the NES version of G.I. Joe. There we go. Blew them up. So we get through the first level. There are seven levels in this game. And even though I have played this many times over the years, I have never actually beaten this game. I think the farthest I've gotten is I've gotten, I want to say, four levels in. And then I never was able to beat it. This level can be particularly confusing because it is very much a maze. And you can't go through these doors. They're just there for show. But I want to get up here because there's a sub-boss up here I need to beat. And he's already toast. So now I have to go back down and get to the regular boss. Oh, I didn't get that star. Trying to get the stars is actually not as easy as it seems. But the more power you can build up, Kenshiro will get a lot stronger until eventually he reaches his ultimate power mode where he will rip his shirt off. That's right, I need to go down because there's stairs here. His defense will go up. And his ability to hit more often and much harder gets significantly better. Now, I think I'm going back all the way to the start, so I have to be careful of which way I'm going here. And because there is no map, you're just hoping you find the right way. And because this is a NES game, and I am playing this on an emulator, I'm playing it on the uh, Messen emulator, M-E-S-E-N, which is a free emulator. Again, all the emulators I play on are free. Go this way? No. Okay. 
Can't go this way. But having the ability to play with turbo makes this game a lot easier. There we go. And now I can walk a lot faster. Now, I've already come through here. This is where I need to go. Can't go this way, so now I have to go down. And I should be able to go down this way. And the final boss will be over here. Almost to the point where I can... There we go. So now my shirt is off and I can do Buku damage. Except I ran out of time. Ah! So I finally got all the way there and then I ran out of time. And I have to start all over again. I thought I had enough time to get that done. Well, that's annoying. So I wonder if I have to beat this sub-boss again. I couldn't pick that star up. And I get the sub boss again. And now I can go this way. So that was my problem. I went back the wrong way to start. And because we don't have a map, it's not like it makes it all that easy for me to determine which way to go. So now we can come this way and we'll fight the other boss. Pick that up. Whoops, and I gotta go up this way. Now, like most fighting games of the era, it is not uncommon to have to deal with... Ooh. Repetitive sprites and things like that. But this guy was a cinch. So now we're in the concentration camp. And now I have what is, I am temporarily invincible even though it doesn't really make it clear. And I'm really hoping I can pick up some more stars.
And this is usually where I get hung up in this game because... In this game, this is as far as you can go on this level, and you can't go in the doors again. So you have to come back this way, which goes all the way back to where you started. And then we have little bouncy guys here who are just annoying because they're quicker than you would think. Ow. And because you can't go up anywhere and you can't jump and land on anything. If you're not sure of where to go, then you're really stuck. Now I've got 30 seconds to get through this level. And there should be a sub boss or somebody here. But there isn't one. I have 22 seconds. Am I going to be able to make it? So I've unlocked full power, which means I can now fire off fireballs and all that stuff, but this is as far as you can get in this level. And just like that, I am toast. In an era where this was all pre-game fact and all that stuff, if you could not figure out how to get through this part of the game, then good luck trying to finish it. But getting back to the original anime itself, one of the things that people really... Well, when you mention it to people who know anime, and they've heard the name, they go, Oh, well, it's all... It's because of the violence in it. Because you see guys get dismembered, and... Again, Kenshiro can make people blow up, and he will come across other... Martial artists who, who can also do the same thing. Uh, in different ways. There's guys who can literally tear people apart with their fingertips. And in the anime, the predominant storyline, along with Kenshiro trying to find his uh, long-standing betrothed, her name is Julia, who was stolen by his best friend Shin, who is another one of the martial artists who can destroy people with their hands. And one of th what happens is, is that when he takes Julia from Kenshiro, one of the things he does is that he imprints in Kenshiro's chest using his fingers the actual uh, constellation of the North Star, of the Big Dipper. 
So that's if you ever see uh, an image or like a meme with somebody who has the. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let him take me out. And that's game over. Um, of the North Star carved in his chest, that is Kenshiro. So let's try this one more time and see if we can't get through this. But what I, the longer I've gone on watching the anime, and it's something I pull out and watch every couple of years, uh, is that it's also the story of three brothers, who are Kenshiro, who's the youngest, then there's Toki, who is the middle one, and the oldest brother, who is Rao. And Rao is a literal giant. He is colossal. And he's the strongest of the three. And they were all the disciples of the previous previous successor to the art form of Hokuto and Shinken. And when it was time to pick who was going to succeed him, Kenshiro was chosen, and the other two brothers, especially in Rao's case, was completely against it. And then there was another student at the school where they taught this art, and his name was Jaggy. And the undercurrent of the story is having Kenshiro as he is trying to find Julia. He has to do battle with all four of his brothers. And to me, that's the more interesting part of the story, is the dynamic between Kenshiro and Jaggy and Toki and Rao. And it ultimately culminates with Kenshiro having to fight Rao, essentially for the fate of the world. Even though Rao is much stronger than Kenshiro, he's much bigger. And they did a standalone movie in 1986 for this uh, anime series. And that was something that I would commonly see rented at Blockbuster. And when I worked in movie stores back in the day, that was one that they wanted to be able to pick up and have kids wanted to watch all the time. So let me see here really quick. I gotta pause this because I gotta find out why it is that we're not able to get get through here. So let me pull up my walkthrough really fast. Since we got a few minutes, I'm hoping we can get through this level. So it looks like we have to find the second door that's here. That's how we have to get through this. says, second order is the right one, but you can't enter it while you're invincible, so it might be wise to avoid the gold necklace. But even so, the controls don't say how you get in through the door. So, imagine you are a... There we go. So you have to A, B, and right. And no sooner do I go in here than I die. And it took a heck of a lot longer for me to figure that out than it should have. So 
So now we come through here. And we get the Whipping Fiend. We blow him up. Somehow that guy was walking on the ceiling. Take him out. Now we're back outside and we'll see if this... ...can get us back to the boss. But I'm not seeing it. So we're gonna go this way. And my guess is this is where the other boss is. Nope. Where do we end up? So we are back over here. Can we go through this door? Nope. There we go. We got 23 seconds and not a whole lot of life. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get through the through to the boss in time. We got 10 seconds and not a lot of life left. Meanwhile, these guys are hopping around us all the time. keeled over. Now I wonder if we start here or do we have to start all the way back? So we have to start all the way back. And we're at 30 minutes so I'm going to call it good right there. But that everybody in a nutshell is the original Fist of the North Star for the NES from 1987. As you can see it is a tremendously flawed game. Because you don't have a map because you don't have any way of knowing how to navigate through the levels it is really easy to run out of time. The gameplay is quite repetitive. The character sprites are very repetitive. Because all you have to do is hit your opponents once and they explode, it's not like you have to do a whole lot of really heavy lifting to be able to bore through the game. And in some ways, it's not too different from the superhero games I've been playing so far, like The Death of Return of Superman and The Punisher, where 
essentially Kenshiro is a god uh, because of his ability to just decimate whoever comes in his way. So it would stand to reason that somebody that powerful shouldn't be as easy to dispatch. And yet, in this game, he's a lot more fragile, at least early on. If you can get the power-ups, he can be a lot stronger. But getting the power-ups is not easy, depending on which section of the level you are in. So, is it a good game? I'm not inclined to say so. If you're somebody like me, who can look at this very much through a lens of nostalgia, and remember what it was like being a kid the first time I saw the box art, like I said, and thinking... Ooh, that's a cool looking game. I think I want to try this. And then you pop it in and go, this is it. Uh, oh, 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 okay. You know, it is, it was a letdown even then, but they've obviously gone on to make more and more versions of games based on this franchise in the year since they have them for everything from the NES through to the PS4. They had versions of it. The PS4 games were built primarily on the dynasty warriors engine and they're very similar in that respect. So, uh, is it a game worth checking out? Maybe, uh, if you want. But, again, there are better versions of a game like this out there to try. Uh, again, I would say, if you're a fan of the series, maybe give it a whirl. But definitely look up the walkthrough like I should have had at the ready when we got started. Because if you don't have the controls down and you don't have a general idea of how to get through the game, you're never going to finish it. Uh, and... Because we didn't have the understanding of how the game was laid out back in the, the late 80s when it came out. That's why a lot of us didn't. So, uh, yeah, it's not one of the better fighting games or the fighting platform games I've played. But uh, because of who, who it is and what it is, it's one that's got a soft spot in my little gamer heart. So, if you've enjoyed this, and I do hope you have, best way you can show it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and ring the bell to be notified of the latest content. We did have Sports Saturday yesterday where we played F1 Race of Champions. Hope you check that one out. And be sure to check our ongoing playthrough of the original Diablo from 1998 for the PlayStation 1 ported over from the PC. We're half a dozen episodes into that. We'll have new ones hitting the channel this next week. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Threads. We are now on both uh, at the same uh, ID at Ronin's Retrocade. And be sure to spread the word about us so we can hit our goal of 100 subscribers as soon as we can. The faster we unlock the YouTube customization algorithm, the, the faster we can make this channel bigger and better. And a special shout out to everybody who has subscribed. I've seen the numbers almost double already in the past month, which for me is super, super encouraging. It lets me know for all my rambling like an idiot through these videos, at least I'm doing something right, I'd like to think. And it gives me, as I always say, incentive to make this channel bigger and better through better graphics, through better uh, presentation, all of that stuff. So you guys keep me going, you keep me honest, and for that, I am very grateful. And on that front, if there is a game you would like to see as feature from the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, SNK, Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, or PlayStation 2, leave it in the comments below, drop me a line on Instagram or threads, can be any game from those consoles you want. And as always, my name is Ron. It's been great to spend this Sucker Punch Sunday with you. Be safe, be well. Above all, stay cool out there. It is super, super hot. So take care of yourselves. Happy gaming. And we'll talk to you again soon with another episode in our ongoing playthrough of the original Diablo. Bye.